Hello and welcome everyone to Last Level Press. I'm Mr. Black and this is my first 15 with Chronix, a free-to-play arena-based combat action game, which, as with all of my usual first 15s, I've never played before save for completing the tutorial, which, on a little note, not entirely specific to this game, however, this one was kind of the digital straw that broke the very frustrating camel upon my back. Developers, do please take notes. Knock it off! with dumping players directly into tutorials before even allowing them access to an options menu to adjust things like sound settings, resolution, all of the things that can allow them to tailor the experience to their hardware setup. I'm not nearly as badly impacted as, say, a headphone user might be when a sudden blaring audio quality starts to just deafen them because they've not been allowed to adjust those settings yet. Again, I don't necessarily mean to take out that rant upon the developers of Chronix. It just kind of did it to me for the first, or rather the, like, fifth or sixth time in a week of testing out new games for First 15 recordings, and I'm kind of getting annoyed by it. Asian developers in particular do this quite a lot, and as I understand it, Chronix is a Korean development team. So, again, please, any of you that are not barred from understanding me by a language barrier, knock that off. Okay, now, I've gotten that out of my system, I feel a bit better now. What is Chronix? I've not seen it described as such, but as my understanding of the game goes, I believe it's actually kind of a MOBA, even though nobody seems to be attaching that tag to it. As I understand, it is a team-based arena combat game utilizing a modest, however interesting looking, roster of characters with an oddly post-apocalyptic art style, which kind of drew me to this game for the purposes of conducting a first 15, whereas a lot of games are starting to flood the market of MOBAs and arena combat games, and it kind of takes a bit to pique my interest, considering I'm well aware of the fact that I'm not a tremendous MOBA fan, and a lot of my coverage of the MOBA genre is not necessarily terribly well received because of the fact that I'm not necessarily going to heap a great deal of praise onto the genre due to the fact that I'm not entirely fond of it myself. However, I do try to maintain as much awareness of my own commentary as possible whenever I comment that I don't like something versus I don't think that is a well-designed thing. And I hope you guys can kind of keep up with me when it comes to my diction in that regard. Now, as for the character roster, I believe the default here is Mr. Old Hand, who seems to be wielding a grenade flail, which is kind of ridiculous and yet creatively awesome, and I like that. He big, or head big, I don't know, who seems to look a great deal like a certain Marcus Phoenix. Charles! I didn't realize Charles was just a heavyset fellow, nor that he wielded a double-barreled Gatling. However, wield it he does. Gear Rabbit, I believe, is one of the unlockable characters, who reminds me quite a bit of a blue-clad lady from Devil May Cry 3. Zick, Claire, who also looks pretty damn cool. Chris, I just, I can't take you seriously, kid. You, you don't look nearly Asian enough to be rocking a Mai Tai style like that. You look a little wimpy, not gonna lie. Iron Fist. I know, I know, a game like this is no place to start debating realism, but are you really going to tell me that guy's core, rippling and muscled though it is, can actually lift all of these mechanical pieces? I like his hair though. I'm actually not terribly against that hairstyle, which ordinarily might look douchey, but on this guy, he can kind of rock it. Serrano looks absolutely crazy, and I kind of like it. Gordon? Culturally sensitive this guy is, although he seems to have a rocket-powered axe, and that does kind of make up for it in Cool Factor. Helena, the notably only free-to-play, right-out-the-gate female character. Come on now, we can do better than this. Luyan, kind of the trademark, normal, Asian-style assassin character. Kiriha, I can't tell whether or not she's going to be just adorably aggressive, or whether or not she's a bit on the ridiculous side. I believe it's somewhere in between. I could swear I've seen this character before. I think he reminds me of Dr. Boskonovich from the Tekken series, but Azimov here is our old man. There's always got to be one. Now then, as for the progression system of this game, the unlocks you may notice on this map, rather on this map menu, there are slots for different bits of character customization. As I understand it, all of the customization is cosmetic. I've read a couple of the Steam user reviews considering these menus are rather arcane and they don't really tell you a great deal of what to expect from the game, exactly what the different functions are, and so when that's the case, I do kind of break my usual, um, 
like media blackout when it comes to coverage of a game so that I can give my own opinions and I want to kind of understand it by the time I come around to a first 15 that way I'm not just staring at the game going I don't know no no I don't uh, and I can actually give you guys at least a little bit of a critical breakdown and so from what I understand having not completed a single match yet and only completed the tutorial all of these items are cosmetic there are however tonics which I've seen criticized to a little degree which I believe are e eh, not equipped acquired by paid means I'm not entirely sure let me check the shop quickly which is where all of these are located you'll notice while we're in the shop there are a multitude of different currencies and expendable assets seed seems to be what they're referring to as the soft currency, or what I usually refer to as the in-game currency of the game. And thankfully, even the character unlocks seem to be uh, unlocked by way of this currency, not necessarily a strictly paid system, and that's good. I'm not exactly sure what kits are. I've got a really deep-sinking feeling that it's got to do with the amount of matches one can play in a day, considering that they are replenished five times, or they're not five times, five units at a shot once a day, I think and you can have up to 35 at one time. That reads an awful lot, like a lot of the, uh, like, coins and tokens one can burn to play matches on things like PSN, and I absolutely detest that system. I'm not exactly sure what it is, though, so I'm going to reserve judgment until later. Premium kit seems to be much the same, just acquired via boosts and things of that nature, and then there's cash, which is, rather unabashedly, a microtransaction currency. Now, where avatars are concerned these are the different bits of character customization and again note all of these are actually acquirable via seed not necessarily through cash and that's cool a lot of uh, mobile games actually only allow for character customization on a cosmetic level by way of paid currency and it's cool that a game like this actually allows for in-game users uh, that don't necessarily have the extra cash to customize their character to do so that's actually pretty cool as for tonics, these are, I believe, actually acquirable via, yeah, seed. So, again, if these are boosts, and yet they are available for uh, in-game currency, I don't necessarily have a great deal against that. I'm not entirely sure where some of the Steam reviews that criticized this system were coming from. Maybe 500 is an incredibly stout amount. I'm not exactly sure of the accrual rate of resources yet. That is one of the things, as with many games like this, I will aim to determine by the end of this video. And once again, characters, which do require a certain level of skill before one can unlock them, are again unlockable for 1,000 each. Thankfully, I don't necessarily have to criticize, like I've done with Smite and a few other games, the weirdness of certain characters costing more, which calls into question balance issues and such. All of the characters are 1,000 and therefore seem to be of the same sort of at least value to unlock. Now, all of that aside, let's jump into the options very quickly. I had some issues at first with adjusting the options before I realized that one can only adjust certain things independently of one another in the visual options by dragging this slider all the way to the right from custom, or rather to custom from low, medium, and high, and I believe very high, um, because otherwise all of these things were static. They would not let you adjust them. So. I'm not really sure why that is, and also, little spell check error, medium is spelled with an E, not, not an I. Sorry. Anyway, I know it's phonetically correct, kinda, but other than that, um, kind of an anemic options menu, unfortunately. The sound is, thankfully, actually pretty good. It allows for multiple sliders of different channels of audio. Game options, also kinda limited. I would hope for uh, some things like uh, field of view, that sort of thing, but, again, when it comes to MOBAs in which field of view is actually kind of... Uh, intrinsically linked to one's ability to control the battlefield, I can understand why in some games, some, mind you, uh, field of view could be a fixed thing. So, enough of my yammering on about all of that, let's game start, and I'll test the matchmaker. Let's auto-match with, let's see, what are our modes? Survival, Brawl, Domination, or Random. Survival is kill enemies or refine SOD to reach a target score within the time limit to win. Brawl, which is three on three, short rounds of team deathmatch, win three rounds out of five rounds to win. Okay, that kind of reminds me of some more like fighting game kind of mechanics. Domination, seven on seven, capture and secure as many control points as possible to win score points. I'm actually quite reminded of Battlefield's conquest mode by that. Actually kind of cool for a fighting game. I do believe for now, I'll jump into, I think Brawl, three on three, I... I think that sounds like a fairly approachable game mode, and so I'll keep things basic for my first run with the game and attempt to get its measure. 
And while I'm waiting on a match for 55 seconds and counting, a little note when it comes to the aesthetic of this game. At least so far, given the character models and a couple of the screenshots of maps and gameplay environments that I've seen, it seems as though the game is kind of at odds with itself. One might expect something a bit more futuristic and technologically advanced out of a game with a UI of this sort of design, very digitized with, like, neon... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like edging and highlights around things. Whereas, as one can even see a little bit in the background artwork on this splash page, I think the actual game environments are meant to be a bit more rustic and ruined and post-apocalyptic in a modern sort of era, and so I'm not entirely sure where one might have gotten the idea that having a clashing system of aesthetic design would look good. I'm of the mind that one should embrace either kind, and at least as a personal fan myself of the uh, post apoc art style, I'd like to at least start my own voice, my own little petition for moving the overall game architecture in terms of its menus toward an aesthetic mirroring that of its in-game environments and character models and other design choices, and why am I waiting on a match over two minutes? I'm considering changing modes. Considering I think if the game has a proper, like, level matchmaker, that Brawl might not necessarily be an incredibly popular mode. For whatever reason, I think it actually sounds fairly approachable and interesting, but... If it reaches three minutes, I'm gonna cancel this search and move over to another mode and hopefully get matched. Nope! No Brawl for me! Okay. I am disappointed, son. Oh well. Auto match. Actually, no. While I'm on thinking about it, let's not auto-match, let's gauge whether or not this game even has a lively player base. Custom match... Oh, damn. Only play in a single AI mode. Again, I really wish games would allow one the best of both worlds, a traditional lobby selection menu and a matchmaker. I've seen other games do it before, and it works. Unfortunately, again, I say this, a lot of Asian games are not doing it. A lot of them are relying either strictly upon one or the other, when one can have one's cake and eat it too in that regard. Which means I can't really gauge whether or not a lot of people are online at any given time with this game right now, and I don't believe there are any active counters. I do actually appreciate games like EVE Online and a couple of other MOBAs that do actually have players online right now, indicators on certain menus, such that you can tell, is right now a good time to actually play this game or not? Hmm... Alright, let's jump into survival since it is the default mode and therefore I think a lot of people will be uh, just sort of habitually inclined to jump into whatever the game defaults to. And we'll see. And that's three minutes on this mode's wait. I'm really getting a sinking feeling that unfortunately this game may be in early access and therefore not even really into itself yet. Already its community kind of seems to be dead. And that's not a good sign. Alright. Domination, can I get into random? Search for the most seamless mode to start the match. Let's do that. Match me with whatever you can, game. I'll take whatever you give me. And note before it comes up in the comments, I'm not exactly playing this at the worst time to conjure up players for a player base. I'm only playing this at, what, like 10 or 11 at night right now? Maybe a tad bit later, when a lot of gamers are home from work slash school, whatever their vocational occupation may be. I should be at not necessarily peak, but not necessarily lowest nadir hours either, and yet, a minute later, nobody on random. The seamless matchmaking mode. Getting a real bad feeling about this. Oh! I finally got one! I couldn't tell whether or not that was something I clicked on. Yes! I would like to join this game. I clicked OK. I'm gonna join the game, right? Right? I don't... Why didn't... Okay, I clicked on this thing, and then, no, I was hoping clicking on this, even though it's only a community button, works some manner of magic. No, it was... it was only a coincidence. I clicked okay! Aha! Another one! Yes! Okay, click, join, claim my place! It's even brawl! Do I, do I have to click on one of these? I've already clicked okay. What is happening? Yes! I want to join! Does every one of those pegs need to get occupied for the match to take for anyone? Yes, apparently so! 
Okay, all right, close this. Because apparently it doesn't automatically close. Uh, select a respawn point? I don't know, oh, I need to select a character. All right, let's go, let's go with Iron Fist, because why not? I've swung enough grenade flails in the tutorial. I apologize that you guys didn't get to see that, but I kind of like to knock those out now before... Oh, I need to ready up. There we go. Before I conduct first 15s, just so that I'm not coming at things completely blind and I can show you guys the real gameplay and not just the tutorial. Could people ready up, please? That'll start countdown. <laughs> you can really see the Korean, all right, because a couple of these little bits of localization have not gotten completed. And once again, I do forgive that, as the game is indeed, as I've mentioned already a couple of times, in early access, and therefore not finished, nor representative necessarily of the final quality of the game. Good people, please, please ready up. Only three of us have. At least the generic rock music in the background is kind of decent to listen to while we wait on people who can't click the ready button. Aha! Finally! I guess they... Discarded their- I don't know where I was going with that. I was gonna, like, discarded their allergy to their keyboards. I don't know, that joke failed. Let's just move on and beat things. Okay, cool looking map. Can I spawn, please? I've been waiting for ages. Again, actually kind of decent background music. Getting my head nodding, at least. Okay! It's a gorgeous map. Really. Can we spawn, please? I've seen this a couple of times now. Game. G game. Game. Round Wait. one. Wake up. Three, two, one. Fight. Th thanks for the extra little bit of waiting. All right, I appreciate that. Oh, good God, I'm a lumbering beast. I'm like White Guy Barrett. All right, let's see. Only with another arm. So, what are my abilities with this guy? I've never taken him into a training before. We've got Grab Shot, Rising Blow, Contain Shot. I suppose I should explain a bit of the way the combat works in this game. We've got a basic attack, which drains no points for left click. Obviously a pretty generic movement system. And apparently pressing spacebar gave me some kind of boost. I don't know. And by... Whoa! Right-clicking, one can use certain special abilities. Same with using Q, unique to each character. And many of those abilities drain a couple of these extra little point resources, which each character apparently accrues and recharges by a unique means, and good lord. You've got to be pinpoint precise with this. And I noticed that as well in the training mode, that for linking things together, one can press, like, E and Q, and also shift-click on either of those buttons as well to do things, and by shift-clicking or shift-activating if it's another key, it'll create, like, a, a higher, more powerful version that also drains more points, so you've got to be kind of sparing and strategic about your usage of those abilities, only I'm not sure at all how this guy regains points, and... Again, ow! By stringing certain abilities together, you can unlock combos, and, of course, those will allow you to wreck face a great deal more efficiently. Only, if your cursor is not on the opponent, the combo won't take. You can't just be right in front of them. No, it's not enough. Your cursor has to actually turn red on the enemy, and good god, this combat feels very sluggish. I... Yeah, there we go! Grab him! Now shoot him while he's down! Like any good honorable man would do! Ow! Ow! Please stop punching me! You're almost dead, I'm coming for you. Good lord, why are these run animations so damn sluggish? This game could stand to use a significant increase in pace. Sprint is now available. I don't know what I just did. Apparently I've also got a cooldown extremely powerful ability activated with F. What is Death Chaser? Let's find out. Actually, I can't right now, because I don't have enough, what is that, AP, I believe, or the ability points to do some of that. Got an assist. I'm kind of flailing about right now. I'm sure veterans of this game are just raging at me in the comments like, you suck at this game! And I get those a lot when it comes to first 15s, especially with MOBAs. I mean, it's almost like I've never played it until now, and I'm splitting my attention between commentary and gameplay or something. 
Why ever would I not already be a pro at a game I've never played? God, I'm such a noob. Oh wait, I actually am. Round one, defeat. What a shocker there. Okay. I'm assuming because this was Brawl, we've got multiple rounds. So, can I change characters? Yes, we can. Alright, let's go to Old Hand and grenade flail it up for a little bit. Considering I at least know a little bit more about Three, this guy, two, having played him in the one, tutorial. Fight. Are you at least a little bit speedier? A little bit is indeed the keyword. Okie dokie. So, I've also got consumables down there in the bottom right activated with the 1 through 4 keys, which I only just remembered I had. Hello, Keenan. I'm going to start beating you now. I don't know when I'll stop. Ow, ow, ow. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Let's see, what can I do with this? What's upper blow do? Hey Uppercut with grenade flail. Ow, ow. I am all of the fire right now. Not good. Oh, wait. Space bar does not jump. Space actually activates an ability. There we go. That's a juggle ability. Okay, so right, like I said before, while this game kind of claims to be more of an action fighter, I'd really consider it a three-dimensional MOBA. I mean, as far as the ability cooldowns, the map designs, and the overall objectives are concerned, the game is a non-isometric MOBA. That's not really up for debate, given the way that this goes. Come on, come on, I want to at least kill someone! I need to kill someone! Come on, get her! Get her! Yes! I've got at least one body count to my name now. Bang! Oh, damn. Oh, did I light him on fire? I think I might have lit him on fire. Because I think one of my abilities allows me to do damage over time by lighting my flaming grenade flail on more fire such that it sticks to the enemy. Alright, let's see here. Can I dust grenade? Yeah, yeah, there we go. I don't know exactly what that did. I'm assuming that's going to give them a debuff if they go into that area of effect, which they're now avoiding because it's kind of obvious. Alright, I've acquired a title. Powerful. Okay. I'm not sure flailing about until I get a whopping two kills qualifies me for the title of powerful, but I'll take it all the same, and then I'll subsequently die. And that guy's got a creepy Hanya mask circling his head. Okay. Now then. Let's see if I can actually figure out a little bit more. Ow! Damn! Oh. I didn't get wrecked, my teammate got wrecked, and that counted as their victory. Okay then, let's keep things fresh, and I guess we'll try out the one vanilla game female. Again, I'm not really necessarily fond on behalf of female gamers for the fact that all of the others that are available by default are male, and there's only the one female. Like, that's that's three, not cool, and there's no three, practical reason two, for that. One, fight. Let's see, I'm assuming because you're very overtly in a completely respectable nurse's uniform, you're going to be a bit of a healer or a buffer. Let's see, yes, I've got a shift right click for healing wave. Ow! And I just got two shotted by a friggin' ninja. That's great. Only I can sprint when I'm in quote unquote non combat. Okay. Now, okay, I do have a little wrist mounted poison needle launcher. That's something. Can I shift click to super poison somebody? I do at least have a ranged attack with this, which actually comes to mind as very useful. What can I do to you? Can I can I activate? No, I can't activate a special against you. Ow! 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 Damn it! Let's see here. Uh, shift. Damn it! Ow! Oh wait, no, you're my friend. What am I doing? I should probably try to heal you though. Ow! I thought that guy was attacking me for a second. Nope. He was attempting to kill the ninja that was attempting to kill me. I thank you, and yet I am disappointed because she still killed me. All right then. Let's take this guy out. He's hurting, and I can hit him in the back. Like a good honorable soldier. There we go. Come on, come on, get him, get him. Okay, assist, assist is good enough. I'll take it. Uh, what does what does heart shock do? Oh, I'm like administering aid to kill them. All right then. Clear! <laughs> that didn't work. Clear! That did not do a whole lot. I think I debuffed him, though, considering he's got an aura about him now. Okie okay, okay, then. And round three. What shall we do for round three? I think we'll go with Phoenix. Mr. Hebbig. 
Because I want to know what I re what damage I can wreak with that shield. Four. Three, Wait, round two, four. How many one, rounds fight. does Brawl go? I thought Brawl was three rounds. I don't know. I am completely unsure. Once again, predictably, I'm quite slow. And I don't even have a sidearm. I'm just only rocking a shield. Okay, then. What do I got? I've got shove. Okay. Kind of reminding of... Ow! A certain other character from Guns 2. Let's see here. Okay, guard. Oh, I see. I can raise the shield and then tap Q to push. Okay. Let's bash you in the face. I like how that Oxide stun locks them. And shift right click. Smash. Bash. Okay, I'm kind of liking this guy. Of course, part of that is coming from the fact that I can stun lock the hell out of people. And yes! Rock up a kill that way, alright. So now. Oh no! Now it's Dr. Boskonovich! Mr. Asimov! Come back here, old man. I need to give you a hip replacement. Let me just shove my shield in there. I'm sure it's good and sturdy. Hey! Back off! I'm trying to beat an old man to death here. What's your problem? Get wrecked. And repress. Oh, I can't do that yet. I kind of think someone might be trying to make a subtle sort of commentary with the fact that the ability of the one that looks like he's got like a police riot shield has a repress ability, which I think is kind of a mistranslation of oppress. I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to read a little bit too much into their message that they're not really making. I don't know! I'm just trying to keep track of what the hell's even going on right now. Oh, I know why it wasn't over with three rounds. Because our team has won one, they've won two. So it is a match to three rounds, but it's to three victories. Okay, I get it now. So it really is a significant mixture of traditional fighting game and MOBA mechanics. And were it not for the fact that the game just feels so sluggish, I wouldn't really mind that, like, at all. This is actually kind of fun. It's just not necessarily very, like, noob-friendly. It's kind of difficult to work one's head around at first. And the controls do feel a little bit on the sluggish and unresponsive side. Alright. Two up. Game points. One more round. Alright, who do I test for my last round? I want to keep things fresh and new. Why am I even asking? I've got to try Charles. Charles, you rambunctious gentleman, you. You and your double-barreled miniguns. Final round. Final round. Three, two, one. Fight. Go. Okay, I've got Skull Warhead, Giant Swing, Bullet Rain, Heat Detector. What do you do? Let's find out. Oh, it's a heat-seeking rocket that came out of nowhere. Charles, you did not tell me you had pockets of holding. You're holding out on me, Charles. Such a man of mystery. Uh... Okay, there we go. Light him up. Oh, that drains my EP. Okay, all right. Let's heat-seeking rocket. Even though it kind of looks like a stinger. Light him up. Ow! You're kind of a badass, just charging right through. A man firing a minigun at you. Ow! 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 Stop it! Oh god. Oh, there's a counter, Charles. Ow! Get him! Rocket! Rocket! Ow, I do not want to be on the fire! Ow! What does dive jump do? Let's find out. Ah! Charges right into death is what it does. Alright, one more time. <laughs> I love his sprint waddle. Charles, you're adorable. I don't remember why I hired you. But if you don't know where all these Charles jokes are coming from, where have you been? Come on, come on. What? What? There we go. Light up the false Charles and giant swing. And... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ow, there we go. Can I, like, dodge? I saw him dodge a second ago. Ow. Oh, that's how I dodge. Okay, so... It's gotta be a variable control with these characters. Yes! Good. Now then, can I build up enough AP to try out whatever Hellfire does? Because that sounds awesome. What does Skull Warhead do? I have no idea. Ow. Ow. You know what? You know what? You know what? Come here! Ow! Ow! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I have a rocket! Ow! Great. Eh. I know I've got two different, like, ability point bars, and I'm not sure exactly which one is used for which. Although, we've won! Round five and- oh god. Charles, I'm so sorry. 
Now then, I know I've exceeded the first 15 usual time by a great margin. However, let's see, C75, I've received a kit reward, I don't know exactly what that is. I've received a card, and the game is kind of locking up on me. Okay, alright. Let's see, I'm now level 2, acquisition list, 500 seed, okay, good. Um, cool. So, where exactly are my rewards, or was that the reward screen there? Okay. So that's experience, seed 97. You're giving me like three different numbers here, game. Which one is the right one? Um, does this back? Yes, okay, now I'm back on the main menu. And apparently they were both the right one, 500 and 97, because I've now got 597. So let's compare that very quickly to some of the shop prices and gauge a bit of the reasonability of the pricing. So for a character, only 1,000. I'm assuming that 500 may have come as a bonus for having completed my first match. I'm not entirely sure, but given that it seemed to be a separate reward from the 97 credits of the match reward, I'm not necessarily going to gauge it on the match. However, even as terribly as I know I did, 97 is still a tenth of the requirement for unlocking a character, and that doesn't seem wholly unreasonable, nor does it seem completely unreasonable for a tonic. I'm assuming one could probably earn a couple hundred from a well-played match, and that therefore a couple of matches a tonic is then going to um, give you a boost to some kind of attribute for a little while. Not exactly game-breaking, not really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, balance disturbing, um, although I could see how it could kind of annoy certain players that others can essentially rack it up and then just annihilate them throughout the round, but that's going to be more of a strategic means of resource management than necessarily a game-breaking feature. And bearing all of that in mind, now some of these cosmetic items are definitely revealing themselves to be a bit on the pricey side. However, given that one doesn't necessarily need to spend uh, resources on anything that is necessarily power centric what i mean to say is one doesn't necessarily need to divvy one's uh, accrual of seed uh, and yes i just checked it to make sure i could remember what it was called uh, between things that are used to say buff and um proceed with one's character versus doing nothing but making it look pretty given that there is no necessarily like skill progression or anything like that um I don't necessarily find these to be entirely outrageous in terms of pricing, and again, because they are available for uh, seed and not necessarily just cash, I can hardly complain about that whatsoever. So the only thing that I'm really coming away from with any real criticism here is the pacing of the game, the kind of sluggish controls, and the fact that in some cases the game doesn't really look all that well polished. As you may have noticed earlier when I was in the settings options, I've got everything cranked almost as high as it will go, and yet on, say, this menu, I'm looking at a very, very pixelated, kind of fuzzy image here, and I recognize that it's because I can zoom into it, and therefore it's pixelation due to the distant zoom, although it doesn't necessarily translate very well into a high visual fidelity, so it's kind of a give and take. As for my impressions of Chronix, I'm going to call it a niche title. I think this is going to appeal to those who are looking for a decent blend between traditional fighting game setup and MOBAs, maybe those who are a bit burnt out on their MOBA of choice, maybe they're looking for something a little bit uh, closer to arena combat and they want something with a different sort of aesthetic. I know for myself, just getting something a little bit more interesting or at least different uh, to look at than what one has been looking at for ages with one's favorite game uh, can sometimes be a bit refreshing and one may find a new favorite that way. So I can't necessarily say that I will spend a great deal of time with Chronix myself, however I do acknowledge it as a pretty decent game and I hope that given it's in early access right now that the developers will continue to work on it continue to add some variety to it uh, maybe polish up a bit of the controls so that it's a bit more smooth and approachable and that this game definitely enjoys a greater player base than it currently has given my difficulties in even matching with other players earlier so thank you all for joining me for this first routine with Chronix. i am mr black here at lessful press and as always i wish you all good gaming and godspeed Well, you can't refuse. That offer is lead in your skull, right in your face hole, oh god.